players to watch for UNLV on offense. We picked a duo on defense for Nevada in Austin Palace. Uh, it begins with him defensively as really a leading does. tackler. Really does. Lex Thomas on offense for UNLV. They'll look to get him going. And Brandon Presley looks to have another big game and got to get him going in that, off, that passing game. Rogers steps up. He's in trouble. He escapes. And Rodgers cut down around the 47-yard line. He did get 13. Daniel Brown made the tackle. But that loss of 21 on the lateral after the review cost UNLV because they were already in two plays into Nevada territory. So the Wolfpack will get it back with a 6-0 lead. Evan Pantels will punt it. And the freshman back deep is McLean Mannix his own 12. <laughs> Pressure coming. Maddox is going to let it go and it hits at the two and runs into the end zone. A touchback. A punt of 52 but a net of just 32. 6 nothing Nevada. In the backfield, this is going to be a four-yard loss. I'll get you off schedule. Getting in the backfield, it's big 98. That is Nick Dadashtian, who's had a good, solid year as a sophomore for UNLV. And he tosses Kelton Moore down. Second down and 14, twin receivers both ways. The air raid offense. Underneath throw to the 22-yard line, a pickup of a half dozen. So it'll be third down, and the long seven, we'll call it the air raid offense, developed originally by Hal Mummy. Mike Leach was involved in the late 80s. They're going to throw it a ton. Big splits with the offensive linemen. What does that mean up front? Well, for defense, it means you think you got creases to go through, but it, it leaves a lot of space for the quarterback to maneuver in a pocket that's protected, like he's doing right now, sliding, not really well. Intercepted at the 38-yard line. Gangy picked off for just the 11th time. The pick to Jericho Flowers, one of the leaders on defense for UNLV. I think he's just trying to throw that away. Yeah, but throw it away. Throw it in the stands. Hit somebody in the face in the stands. Can't make that throw. You see McLean Maddox stops on the crossing route, but there is three rebel defenders there. Just throw it out of bounds. Make sure. You had gotten off to such a great start offensively. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Just throw it out of bounds. How many times did a coach tell you in your long career, a punt is okay? Yeah, absolutely. It is okay. And as much as we always want to make a play, you got to know when to just let it go and throw it out of bounds. It's second down. So the Rebels... With great field position, down 6 nothing. Armani Rogers out of the shotgun. And Rogers breaks a tackle. And he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. A lot of moving parts on that play. Gabriel Sewell makes the tackle. The sophomore Mike Linebacker out of St. George, Utah, number seven. They show power, power off tackle and run the fly sweep in front of it. Quarterback foul. So a lot of moving parts. That's a really good job of that defense to stay home. Not really stare down the window dressing. Rogers has a man, but he's out of bounds. That was Tim Holt. Tight end. It'll be third down. It's good recognition. You gotta keep him in play. Gotta keep him in play. And this is what we saw a week ago with him. Struggled a little bit. 
at times, got on track at times, got, got the rushing attack going, but that's really close. But he was able to snap in, tap into it when time counted. When you watch this kid, this young retro freshman, watch him and his demeanor never changes, just continues to play football. Pressure coming. Rodgers vacates, he's got room. Rodgers down the sideline. First down, UNLV. Coverage was great, pressure came, but then there's number one's ability to make a good play out of what looks like a bad play. You gotta stay in your lane, and you can't just run upfield, especially against a guy like this. If you're, you want the sack so bad, stay in your lane, don't just run upfield and create creases and levels where he's able to escape. When you look at what he did a week ago. 19 yards on the escape. Rodgers can't escape there, ball on the ground. Nevada has it. It was Lawson Hall picking up the loose football. To me, to me, that's the second turnover. This might be the first one, but here it's first down. Just made a huge play, put the ball away. Put the ball away and live for the next down. Early down turnovers are, are double trouble. And then you count the backwards pass on the other drive. That's the second turnover to me, in my estimation, on the day. I think Patrick Chowd had knocked it out. You gotta take care of it in traffic. You have to. Jackson Kincaid comes in at running back. Number five's got a good burst. He gets the football. Trying to go wide, nowhere to go. Well defended by UNLV. And he He'll threw a punch. A he's of yards. Get, he threw a punch. He may get thrown out of the game. He just threw a punch. He can't do it. And you see they tr try to sweep right, and it's outflanked. Good job getting outside, Javen White. But watch here. Right there, the left jab. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number five, offense. The down will count, third down. That's an enormous play because, depending on what happens here, you were in, in all likelihood, four down territory. You're kind of in that gray area around the 43, 44 yard line. I can't say it enough. When you get in these type of games, there's so much emotion, you can't play emotionally. You have to play with that emotion and just keep your heads about you. So now it's third and 25. They need the 34 yard line. That is a big screen team with this air raid offense. But they're gonna go on the ground. And to the 49 yard line tumbles Kelton Moore. Robert Jackson will get credit for the tackle. The offense is staying on the field right now. This is interesting. One other thing we should tell you about Coach Darnell and Coach Mummy, they always have about a half a dozen gadget plays in their hip pocket. And not that they don't use, that they break out typically. They, they want to use them, and there's no, why do you practice them? So they go pooch punt. And this works out nicely down to the 12-yard line. UNLV has it backed up at their own 12-yard line. 6-0 Nevada. Rodgers rolls and a nice catch and a couple of broken tackles out to the 40-yard line is Darren Woods. He went up high to grab it. Woods is sophomore from Missouri City, Texas. He had the big 53-yarder a week ago to, to get him in good position to win that game. Look at him extend, go up and make that play. Daniel Brown thought he had an interception. Wood says, no, sir, I got it. This is a Nevada defense that has been much maligned. They've given up 212 yards on average on the ground, 273 in the air. Now here's a little gadget play for the Rebels. And they'll get 11 or 12 yards as they 
flip it to Brandon Presley. Aki Muhammad ran him out. But when it comes to rivalry games, he's been in a ton of the big ones. The big ones. And he understands what it means to this community here to keep that Fremont Cannon. See the nice reverse there. And Barney Cotton going to his bag of tricks as well, not to be outdone. He understands the meaning of this. And he wants to set a precedent for his players and a great standard for seasons to come. Campbell. Well, that's a... Big time pop. Austin Paulus met him in the hole. Pick up a three or four. Jay Norvell on this matchup this Saturday afternoon in Northern Nevada. We have something to look forward to. This is our bowl game. Uh, we're not going to play in a bowl this year, so um, you know we're we're really looking forward to Saturday and and. Uh, and teeing it up and and uh, and playing one more time in Mackey and, and having it mean something. Rogers, good improvisation improvisation there to get it uh, off before potentially taking a sack. And that'll be a couple yards short of a first down. He got it to Giovanni Faolo. Matthew Sewell put a shot right on him. And every time he gets outside, they're scraping. Safety's rotating down. Somebody's coming to put a body on Armani Rodgers. They do not want to let him get out and get free. Two and three on third down. Two tight ends. Rodgers straight ahead. First down. That's always a good call. Give it to the quarterback who's already rushed this year for well over 700 yards. Jordan Silva. Made the tackle. First down. Rebels. It just looks. It just looks funny when you got a six-five guy running in between the tackles with power, but he does. He gets his shoulders down and finishes forward. Very strong young man. I, mean, I don't even know if he's 19 years old yet. A young guy that is just strong and, and blossoming into a leader for this team. Trips to the top. Campbell carrying the football. Knocking people over. He's got 12. And again, watch Patrick Chowda on this play. Put the hammer down on the quarterback. They do not want to allow him to get loose. I don't see Lexington Thomas right around the offensive staff. On the sideline, Brad Thompson checked to see if he got nicked at all. Been all Campbell. First down, and here comes Campbell again. And he gets maybe a yard. Malik Reed, real active defensive end for Nevada, makes a tackle. And that'll be all for the first chapter here at Mackey Stadium in Reno. Nevada took the opening kick. Punched it in the end zone. Their extra point was blocked. They're up 6 0. Pretty autumn afternoon, late November. The great matchup for the Fremont Cannon between Nevada and UNLV. UNLV on the move. Second down and nine as we begin the second quarter. And this is toward the end zone and a 50 50 ball incomplete. Aki Muhammad had the. Good coverage on Kendall Keyes, who goes six foot four. It'll be third down. Drew, you and I talk about talk about this all the time. Like we don't we don't just like fade routes. Let's run a route, beat a guy, run around, use your feet, move a guy. It is much easier for DBs to just turn and hug you and run with you because you're both fighting for position. But if you can get a guy off his mark as a, as a receiver create more space especially there because the ball snapped at the 12 yard line you can run routes it's not you're, you're not down on the one or the two and you're in the shotgun big third down here Rodgers vacates again can he get to the sticks how about better than that wow touchdown UNLV wow he's a long strider and from our vantage point you're thinking it's going to be close whether he can get a first down right. He ends up running it into the end zone. And he accelerates. Look at Devontae Boyd out in front doing a great job staying attached. As soon as he saw his quarterback coming, stayed attached to this guy, didn't let him get a piece of him. Great job of blocking out front. 
A guy with the ability to make a play when there seemingly is not one there. The extra point is good, and UNLV takes a 7-6 lead. Armani Rogers, a 13-yard scramble for a touchdown. 88-yard drive. Well, you have to learn a little bit more about the Fremont Cannon. You go all the way back to uh, the 19th century. John C. Fremont, he was a general. He led expeditions throughout this uh, part of the country. He was known as the Pathfinder. He also, by the way, ran unsuccessfully for president in 1856, as you, I'm sure, all recall after they tabulated the <laughs> votes. James Buchanan was the winner in 56. The next Republican candidate fared a little bit better, one Abraham Lincoln. This kick by Gutierrez through the end zone, and there is the Fremont Cannon. It weighs over 500 pounds. It's painted in blue. And it's not just talked about in the football offices of Nevada and UNLV the week of the game. It's talked about during spring practice. It's talked about fall practice. Here's Mannix ahead for about nine yards. Dalton Baker's got to attack that. He can't wait. Jericho Flowers did a great job of forcing everything back inside on the screen, but Baker can't wait. He can't sit and wait on it. Flowers has a sideline covered. You've got to attack that guy and squeeze him. Ganji heads off and straight ahead goes Kelton Moore. Good gain on first down. Let's go downstairs, Brad Thompson. Brad, what do you have? Guys, Nevada's wearing a new helmet. They've never worn this helmet before. They got the number on one side, Battleborn emblem on the other, Nevada grit on the back side of it. They just wanted to do something special for this game and new helmets here today. And they also have Battleborn on their pant leg. At that time, they were on different pages, pulled it out, and the pass was intended to Tucker Melcher but Melcher was running more of a vertical route. He looked like he was going the block. Like he didn't look like he was expecting that to be thrown to him. So a little miscommunication. Second and 10. And this is good defense against the run. It'll be third down and nine. Gabe, Gabe McCoy, McCoy laid the charge. He did, but he's got to wrap up. He let the guy bounce off. It's good, tough running. It's a big back, but you got to wrap up. Way to get there and, and have your gap strong, but you got to wrap up. Gabe's an undersized sandbacker. He looks more like a safety. He's got 210, 215 pounds. Third down and nine. The battle needs the 36, and they'll get the 34. A little quick out to Brendan O'Leary Orange and will delivered by Ty Ganji. First down Nevada, that was in front of Jericho Flowers. You have to respect the speed of O'Leary Orange and give him space. Third catch for O'Leary Orange. That ball was thrown before the break, well done. That's how it's supposed to be done. Ganji wanted to take a shot and this is complete to the Still going to the seventh Ball's yard out. Ball's line. out. And the ball came out late. No whistle. It's heading the other direction. What a turn of events. That goes from being an absolute hustle play from Demps, who's down on the far end of the field. He wants to throw the fake screen and up, but he comes back to his safety valve. And watch the effort here by Demps. One miss, two miss, and then he goes up the sideline. And once he gets hit here from behind, the ball pops out. That ball is out. It's picked up by Jameer Outsi. It's a defensive end. And he traveled 52 yards with the football. And now UNLV leading by a point. Again, there was a blocked extra point by Mike Hughes. And now they have the football at the plus 25-yard line. They 
11.50 to go before halftime. Rodgers is blown up at the 30-yard line. Penetration from Corey Rush. A loss of four, maybe five. Lexington Thomas is back in there. And that's a great job of reading and understanding. And, and they're putting a hat on Armani Rodgers every time he carries a fake, anytime. Rodgers complete inside the 15 for a first down. Presley with the stick post route on the backside and watch his bullet. I mean, this thing comes out like a howitzer. It's hard to pick up those numbers with the silver numerals. We watched Brandon Presley. I mean, that's, that's a rocket throw right on the face of Presley. And then he does a good job of hanging on to the ball. Thomas finds a little opening. He'll get it down to about the seven-yard line. Aki Muhammad the tackle. He's banged up on the play. He's down. Moody and Brown are the two corners. Second down and five. Rodgers straight ahead. It's going to be about a yard short of a first down. Austin Polis made another tackle defensively for Nevada. It'll be third and short, and so far UNLV's been great on third down. They're four out of five. They've got 40% on the season. Again, both of these schools, under 500, but they've had prolific offenses. Done it a bunch of different ways. They've both run the ball well. They've both thrown it well at times. Go toss sweep, and he's going to lose three yards. That's interesting. They needed a yard, maybe a yard and a half, and they go wide, and no thought here on fourth down because it was a loss of about three. You'll see the field goal unit for UNLV. That's a big play by Nevada. I mean, that's just too easy to, to string out. And this defense can run. Look at Paula scrape. Great job. You can't get up to the second level. Evan Pantels will try a 24-yard field goal to extend UNLV's lead. It's perfect under 40 yards. And he remains so. 10-6 Rebels, but that's a victory of sorts for the Wolfpack. One of the great vacation spots in America, one of the most beautiful places in our great land, Lake Tahoe. And depending on how much snow is in the high Sierras, you get there in uh, less than an hour, or it could take you much longer <laughs> going through Truckee. That's the indicator on the weather, Truckee. Truckee is the indicator, <laughs> It's yeah. the indicator. I, you know, Anybody who's been there has been in Reno when it's you know, 60 degrees and they go up there and there's 20 feet of snow on the ground. That'll be a touchback. So here's Ganji, and he's got Kelton Moore behind him. And they'll throw it in the flat and a pickup of four. This is Andrew Sellis, a junior from San Quentin, California. You know, he's choosing to stay in that cover two shell. There's nobody in the flat on either side. So they're giving those plays up. They're giving the bubble screens up. Ganges kept clean, and 
and he's got it to the 31-yard line. A short gain, he threw it to his running back, Kelton Moore. That's a good job. It's a good job of checking down. He didn't like what he saw over the top. You know, be dropping seven in coverage. Gabe McCoy involved again. Rebels run a twist up front, and Ganji has to throw it away. Pops foul did a nice job of recognizing the screen and takes out Kelton Moore, excuse me, Malik Brody. Oh, his three was crunched up. It was Kelton Moore. My, my fault. Uh, great job of recognition by Pops foul. Sniffed and a, it out. And a three and out. This is Quentin Conaway on fourth down and four. And not a good punt. The 31 yard line, Jericho Flowers comes up. That's a line drive punt. The Rebels trying to win for the sixth time this year. And think about their season. They were a 45 point favorite on opening day against Howard, an FCS school. They end up losing. And then they blow the 27 nothing lead at Air Force. And you think, boy, it's going to be hard emotionally to recover. They've now won three of their next of, of their last four and are in a position to finish 500 and again become bowl eligible. Not to mention winning the back to Fremont County. Rogers escapes again for at least a yard or two. You know, you, you talked about that Air Force game. They followed that up the following weekend at home against Utah State. Had up a 28-14 in a the first half. There and dominating that game and, and lost it. But those those two losses hurt. But they have continued to press on and continue to battle. And now have won three straight conference games. Conference games, which hasn't happened for them. Since 1994 was the last time they won three straight. That was when they uh, had a championship year in the Big West. Thomas gets loose. And you see his quick feet. First down out to the 44-yard line for the Rebels. Lexington Thomas, last week 127 yards. In their victory over New Mexico, he's rushed for, including today, over 1,300 yards in the on the season. He came in averaging six and a half a carry, which is 14th best in college football. One of the better backs nobody's, nobody's ever heard, heard of, of, right? Nobody's ever heard of, but backs in this conference don't get a lot of respect. Now Rashad Penny. Screen, big opening for Thomas. They finally get him down at the 32-yard line. Pickup of 13. It was Nephi Sewell making the tackle eventually. Look at the nice moves inside the lane. And then he just figures out, I'm not going to get any more. I'm tucking the ball. and Good down. He is so quick and has such good vision. He finishes, too. He has been he in the really end zone does. 17 times this year. His career numbers at UNLV. I'll give it to him again. He still uh, manages to get three or four. Didn't look like much. Lay Meyer, part of the tackle. Thomas, 170 pound junior from Houston. And here's a little note about Lexington Thomas. He is by far their best pass protector. So you know he's a tough guy, too. He's, he's, those Texas running backs. Those, yep. those kids play tough. And there's uh, Campbell back in there. Xavier Campbell. You go for 170 to 220 coming downhill at you. Now third and one here. My guess is they're not going to run toss sweep. I, I don't think they'll run toss sweep here. Bring Tim Holt back in. They're going to operate out of the gun. Campbell remains in the game. But you've got a lead blocker here with your tight end if you want it, wherever you're going to go. They'll go Campbell. And it's 
going to be close. He's got it. His, his initial surge had it. Based on where uh, the two linesmen are coming in, I would agree with you. If you follow Tim Holt on that play, he's going to lead. Watch him inside and lead. He's got to get his shoulder squared upfield and get a little more push. But he had a good surge and was able to finish. First down for UNLV from the 22-yard line of Nevada. Clock moving. This snap will take place with less than three minutes to play in the first half. Rebels up 10-6. Campbell got low and drives inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. So they'll move him, actually, they'll move him back uh, between the 19 and 20. He's got that low pad level. Got to pick his feet up in that lane. If he does, he might score there. As you see him scored out the other end, and Lex Thomas comes back in the game. This has been mostly on the ground. Now Rodgers wants to throw. He's got single up coverage, and a good job of using his body. Daniel Brown just boxed Devontae Boyd out of bounds by about two or three yards. And that, this is going to be what's going to keep him from possibly playing on the next level. Not being able to get off the press. You're being written three yards out of bounds. You've got the entire side of the field over there to work. You've got to foot fire, study your guy, make an inside move, and then get back outside. Create some space for your quarterback. There was nothing there to throw to. Couldn't get off the press. That's a good job by Daniel Brown. And now third down and eight. Nevada walks six up. They bring five. Armani Rogers is high, and it'll be fourth down. If the ball was a little bit lower, that's pass interference. Defender got there a half a second early. Kendall Key's the intended target. That's Damian Baber in the neighborhood. Okay, watch Keys come inside right there on the inside, and the contact is made right there. The ball's thrown a little lower. That, that's pass interference. He's early on that play. So Evan Pantels will come out again for UNLV. This attempt will be of 37 yards. He hit from 24 yards a few moments ago. And he is really accurate, right down the middle. 23 out of 23 in his career inside of 40 yards. Another field goal for the Rebels. They're up 13 to six with two of 13-6 UNLV. They play for the Fremont Cannon. It's painted in blue because Nevada's had it. Now, you're saying, where are they going with the Cannon? This rivalry gets real emotional, so they don't want anything happening to the Cannon, so they're gonna put it in the locker room if UNLV were to win the football game. They would uh, move it over to the UNLV locker room afterwards. Ganji's going to look his direction, but he came under pressure. And now he throws it complete to the aforementioned Wyatt Demps. Nice little scramble, and that's an advance of 19 yards for Nevada. But where's my safety? I got to have help. Great job of stepping around the pressure, but there's no vertical threat. So my safety doesn't need to be 35 yards down the field. Great throw and catch. Nevada has two timeouts. Down the middle, high, and almost on the overthrow. Possibility for an interception for the Syracuse transfer, Chauncey Sisson. It'll be second down. Sisson, a 210-pound senior from Henrietta, New York. About five on the screen to O'Leary Orange. They could, they could line up and run that play every down and get some yards. Well, on tape, we've seen them do it where it seems like they've done it uh, every down. This is Gene. Third down and four for Nevada. It's one of four on the day. See if they screen to the top. Nope, they're going to run the football to get the first down that way. Ryan Keyes making the tackle on Kelton Moore, but Nevada on the move, seven yards on that pickup for Moore. We just gotta keep tempo, keep the tempo, keep pace. They have all kinds of time, and again, they have both 
They have two of their three timeouts. And Moore drops it. It's not the worst thing in the world. It would have been a short game. The clock stops with 117 to go. 13-6, UNLV. Double ends on the top, top side of the field with McLean Mannix. Running the in route, had him open, came off early. And this ball came out late. They're going to say he was down. Kelton Moore. And he'll bring up third down. He got him seven. Third down and three. That's a design screen, just a swing pass. Watch the tight end block and then head on out to block for him on the screen. That's design play. Yeah, it doesn't come out until his back hits the ground. That's a good call. And again, it's Moore right up the middle to the 22-yard line. First down, Nevada. That's a pickup of 16. They're getting gassed up front. The union is putting in work. Ganji fires, and he's got a first down, or excuse me, he's got a complete to Brendan O'Leary Orange. Another catch for Orange. Keys made the tackle. And a timeout is called here by Nevada with 34 seconds left. So Nevada has a, a nice advantage having the 6'4 O'Leary Orange and the 6'4 Wyatt Demps. I like the middle of the field, should be wide open. It's a wide cover two. Pressure coming, they go down the middle. That was nearly intercepted. It just shocked Brian Keyes. It hit him right in the gut. Looked like he broke his forearm. <laughs> Watch. But look at the middle of the field's wide open with uh, touch. Let, let me right correct on that. The arm. It, it was not quite on his uh, chest plate. He looked like he didn't know what to do, though. Like he, 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 tried, like, to, he tried to pat it up <laughs> in the air. <laughs> He's like, hey, man, I just tackle people. I just tackle. Third down, 30 seconds left. Again, Nevada has one timeout left. When I, when I say middle of field, I mean something like a middle read, second level, like 12 to 15 yards. Ganji's got to throw it away. And was that grounded? That's going to be the question. Who's there? Who's there? There is no foul grounding. The quarterback was outside the tackle box and threw the ball beyond the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down. Question. It's close whether he was outside the tackle box, but now There's you'll have to go there. for three if you're He's Nevada. Out. That's a good call. Yeah, good out. call. He was outside good the call. tackle box. Spencer Pettit will come on. And this will be a 35-yard attempt, pretty much straight on. And the kick is right through so a nice job by Pettit he makes the 35 yard kick and that will be the final play of a first half in a battle for the Fremont Cannon and on a pretty autumn afternoon 13-9 the Rebels have a four point advantage on the Nevada Wolfpack Tony Sanchez and Brad Thompson are going to have a conversation hopefully here in a moment. A lot of fans have made the trip north, about seven-hour drive. Let's get it down right now to Brad. Coach, you've got the lead. How would you evaluate your team's performance in the first half? Okay, I mean, we left some points out there. we got to convert. We have the third and short. You want to get touchdowns there, not field goals. They've held us to a couple of field goals. Got to do a better job there. And at the end of the half, we need to get that stop, you know, keep that seven-point lead. We get the ball coming out of the half. So disappointed they were able to move the ball down and kick the field goal. But we're not in a bad situation. 30 minutes from taking home that cannon. Yeah. What's the message at halftime? Stay the course, and we got to do a great job of continuing to execute, tackling the space, have some tackle issues. Luckily, we got a turnover on that one big one there, but we can do a good job of not giving up chunk plays and just do a better job when we get in the red zone of finishing in the end zone. I think we can pull it away. Coach, thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. Guys? All right, thanks very much, and uh, great candor there for Tony Sanchez in his third year. He continues to grow that UNLV program. They're up 13 to 9 on Nevada. When we come back, Brad will have our Ram halftime report from here in Reno. That is one of the great trophies in college football. The Fremont Cannon, it weighs more than 500 pounds, 
and you get to take it home and paint it in your uh, school colors. Right now it's in blue, and that's not how Nevada wanted to start the half. The kickoff goes out of bounds. Off out of bounds, kicking team. By Ramiz Ahmed. First down. So UNLV with a four-point lead will have really good field position. Let's check in with Brad Thompson. He visited a moment ago with Jay Norvell. Brad? Coach Norvell said that offensively, they need to take care of the ball. They can't turn it over. They've been pretty clean so far. They think that'll jumpstart the offense. And then defensively, he likes what they've done so far. The issue is tackling Rodgers. They need to tackle him better and easier said than done, guys. Yeah, there's a whole lot of schools that have had a handful uh, trying to tackle Armani Rodgers. Six out of 11. And he hands it off to Lexington Thomas and a minimal gain. Big fellas in the middle. Halcia Sakona and Patrick Chowda. You just you just came at me with a Boston accent right there. Well, the, because the it, it, it's so funny you said that, <laughs> and we've been together now for a while. I just I'm a little hungry, and I was thinking of my roots back, my New England roots. So I was thinking maybe I could get some chowda here at halftime. <laughs> Second down and seven. Thomas again, and Thomas will get blown up around the 40-yard line. It'll be third down and five for UNLV. Some of the numbers from the first half. Total offense favoring Nevada, time of possession. In a big way favoring UNLV last year, Nevada rushed for over 300 yards in this game. They played keep away. The two turnovers costly for Nevada. Turnovers are always costly. It's a close football game. It is, it is, and UNLV has the time of possession because they're doing a great job on the ground. See if they can convert this third and intermediate. Rodgers, now he looks to run, and Rodgers will have a first down. It's always an RPO with Armani Rodgers, isn't it? It is. They're trying to run that same route they've run on third down. They like to roll out and throw the comeback. This time it's jumped. Paulus gets outside of him. He turns up field and turns into a running back. Rodgers has 11 carries for, they list him at 25 yards rushing. Keep in mind, when they lost early in the game on that lateral that was reviewed, they lost 21 yards. That came off Rodgers' rushing attempt. So he's actually producing. Let's not get into that. Yeah, Let's not get into that. Uh, I agree with you. Here's a little jet sweep. And about eight or nine yards on the jet sweep for Drew Techman been injured the last uh, couple of weeks. Back involved, the true freshman from Ackworth, Georgia, suburb of Atlanta. He's another guy they like to try and get the ball in space to because of his speed. That was a big conversion set, that third down run by Armani Rogers because now they're already at the 41 of Nevada and they have a second and short here. Rodgers, pressure, and that forced the low throw to Holt. You got it. Now you, it's third and long. You just got to put touch on it. You're, you're over the top of these guys. Just put some touch on that ball. Quickly to Brad Thompson. Brad? Guys, more on Chowder. He's looking to become a U.S. citizen in two, uh, 2018. You said he came over from Cameroon. That was when he was age 11, couldn't even speak English. And if he doesn't go to the NFL or when he's done in the NFL, he plans to return to Cameroon and help build schools and hospitals for those in need. A guy that's really, really come along, still a raw talent, but a lot to play for here and, and doing good things back in his home country. Absolutely, third down and nine. Rodgers with time, flag comes in, incomplete, and it was thrown by the referee, and generally speaking, it is a hold if your referee throws the flag. Holding, number 64, offense. That penalty is declined, fourth down. Now a decision for Tony Sanchez. Right it's on cue. Fourth and nine. Right on cue. Look at Chowder with the slap and the takedown right there by Nathan Jacobson. They're going to try a field goal of 53 yards. If you're UNLB here, you've got to make sure you secure and protect so you can get this kickoff. And 
This looks good, and it is with plenty of room. Evan Pantels stretches the lead to 16 to nine. A 53 yard field goal. Back in Reno, blue and red in the stands. Nevada and UNLV. With Seth Bonner and Brad Thompson and our entire AT&T Sportsnet crew, I'm Drew Goodman. Big thanks to our crew. They've uh, put in a long football season, now making the transition to hoops. In fact, we were in Reno on Tuesday. Saw the uh, University of Nevada beat Davidson from Coach Musselman. They're going to be outstanding again, defending Mountain West champs in men's hoops. This is returnable. From the goal line, this is Henley. And he's going to be shy of the 20, knocked down at the 16-yard line. Inside of four minutes to go in the third quarter. A touchdown separating these two schools. Down the middle, complete to Maddox. To the 44-yard line, McLean Maddox. That's 24 on the hookup. Dalton Baker made the tackle. This is just a middle read route. He gets over the backer. Not enough depth from Keys. Dalton Baker has to bring him down. That's a great throw and catch. A little zone beater, when huh? You got those, those guys that can run and are quick. A little end cut, about 14 yards. Ganji pulls it back. And he has to complete the Sellis right at midfield. That's a, an easy seven. That's a, still a good tackle in the open field by Jericho Flowers. I really like the way this young man plays. Good tackler, just a sophomore. He is very, very consistent. We've seen him a few times this year. Here's a gadget. Sellis can throw it. He's got Maddox out there, complete. There's the first of the gadget plays from Matt Mummy. 28 yards to Maddox from Andrew Sellis. Well, I guarantee it won't be the last. That's a pretty ball right over the top of the corner, or the outside backer there, excuse me. Javen White. Beautiful throw. Well designed. Nevada trying to tie it up. And spinning ahead is Kelton Moore. He's one of those guys that wears you down. The more you have to tackle him. He's rushed for close to 800 yards this year. He just kind of keeps plugging away. You know, he Tough go last week. He doesn't look like it, but he was a high school quarterback. They'll run him out of the Wildcat on occasion. This is Ganji keeping it. He hasn't done that much. First down inside the 10. First and goal for the Wolfpack. Watch his zone read. Good read. He's got a tight end pulling out in front. He's just trying to find somebody to block, and Brandon Scott never did. Best thing to do there, Brandon Scott, is turn inside and look inside. Flow will be coming. Coaching tip from Seth Bonner. Mannix goes in motion. Ganji. Ball in the air. Intercepted. No. Did it come out? Incomplete. Wow. A missed opportunity for UNLV. And Ganji was really fortunate. You're no quarterback. He threw that late. Really late. Should have taken the fly sweep and the bubble route. But he stares it down and tries to get it in there late. But don't fight for the ball. You got to come up with that one. Got to. Don't fight for it. Remember that play. We'll see if Nevada comes back and wins this football game. That weak side with the back out if you want it. Ganji comes to run again, and he ran into Keys. So now it is third and goal. 
We've got, got a good situation to the boundary side of the field. If you want to go with your tight end or fullback, some kind of combination route, they come out in the balance set. Large play here, late stages of the third quarter. Third and goal for Nevada. Toward the back of the end zone, caught. Touchdown, what a grab. Is that Trevian Armstrong, we haven't talked about him. He's 6'3", a redshirt freshman all the way from Richmond, Virginia. This was caught in traffic up high. With both feet down. That's good on Sundays. I mean, he went up and took it. Now, how how deflated are you if you're UNLV? You've, you've had command of this game and have not been able to put it away. Spencer Pettit ties it at 16. Now you're going to have to reach deep inside. Well, you think back to two plays. Get stuffed on fourth down, and then the woulda, shoulda, coulda been interception two plays ago. Absolutely. But I, look at that. That's a high point rebound. He looked like he was going up for a dunk. How about this kid, Trevian Armstrong? Said redshirt freshman. He has 12 catches this year. Four have been in the end zone. I mean, he literally, they were throwing him an alley-oop right there for a dunk. He timed it. One, two, off the left foot. And went up and took it. And now you have momentum, which I believe in, especially in this game, on the side of the Wolfpack. Good thing for them is they just came from a week where they had to respond after not stopping New Mexico. And they were able to do it. So they've got to call back on those recent memories to, to come out and execute. 33 seconds left in the third quarter. Armani Rogers on first down. He throws a deep ball, and it's in and out of the hands of Devontae Boyd with the safety closing. Elijah Moody had the initial coverage, and then Nephi Sewell broke it up. I think that might be Presley over there on the side. Wasn't able to bring it in. It's a good throw, but he's thinking of running instead of securing the catch. That is Presley. You don't see those the dreadlocks from... Devontae Boyd, but once you get your hands on it, bring it in. Don't worry about running after the catch. You've already got a good game. Rodgers will keep, and he gets very little. 95, Patrick Chatta, who has played a humongous game, gets there quickly, third and long. Listen, I don't know if he's going to stick in the NFL, but I, I tell you what, with his size and athleticism, as as Raw as he is, he's a guy you've got to give a shot to. With his levers, his long arms, 6'4", 250. Maybe a practice squad Got to give that guy a shot. They reset the clock at 15 minutes. The fourth quarter awaits. So we begin the fourth quarter. UNLV and Nevada tied at 16. Third and nine for the Rebels. They need their own 38. Rodgers in trouble. And he's dropped. Back at the 17, it's Corey Rush again. This is remarkable. This is a Nevada defense that has given up on average almost 500 yards a game. They have held UNLV beneath 270 through three quarters. Effort and want to. They've continued to play, forcing field goals, not allowing UNLV to put touchdowns on the board has been huge. And now Nevada should get great field position. Mannix, the outstanding freshman, will have an opportunity here. Line drive, punt, gathered in at the 37. And he gets to the wall. Mannix looking to bust one. Still going to the 29-yard line. What a game for the true freshman. Could have tacked on a face mask on the end of that play. But momentum has completely swung. You've got to make this tackle. 42-yard return. Missed tackle there from Sism. And he is off to the races. And watch here. Could have had a face mask there. And he's come alive since being 
taken out on the bubble screen. He's come alive. You know what? He's got football running through his blood. He's from Midland, Texas. His father was on that infamous 88 Permian Panther team that uh, set the stage ultimately for the book in the uh, television show Friday Night Lights. Here's Sellis again. Toppled at the 20, falls to the 19, flowers the tackle. 15 more, 40 yards on two plays for Ganji to Sellis. Nice little out. Timing was excellent there. Ball out before he even broke. Doesn't give the defense a lot of time to react. And now you're seeing a lot of hands on the hips for the front four for the Rebels. Now here comes Moore. And Moore with 10 or 11. Early on, not a lot of room for Kelton Moore. But he's that back that will wear a defense down. Low to the ground, 5'10", about 220, 225 pounds. They give him nine. Ganji, little throwback. And this is gonna lose a yard. That's Austin Corbett who is eligible. And I thought, I thought he was, I gonna, thought throw he was gonna throw it. I did too. But watch Flowers attack. Good job peeling back and they throw it backwards and it's Flowers with a tremendous effort. You there was only one white shirt moving at mock speed on that entire play. Can you play book? It wasn't for, it wasn't for him. Can your playbook have too many pages sometimes? Ganji will run for the first down. Where sometimes, because you are so creative, you can get too cute? Well, at times, at times for sure, it can happen. But there's some tired dogs out there for the Rebels right now. Miles Beach, a backup tackle, comes in as a tight end. First down, Moore. He keeps driving forward. He is inside the five to the four-yard line. Man, no, Second and goal there. Not a lot of depth. You got 215-pound Will linebacker, 195-pound Sam linebacker. One big guy in the middle, Brian Keyes, 250 pounds. And these guys are trying to stuff this rushing attack. Here comes Moore again. Stopped initially, and he leads toward the goal line. He is short by a yard or so. This is just a good fight inside. It's hard to get your pads low when you're fatigued, isn't it, it, it really is. Stand up to see what's going on instead of striking off the ball. They've been on the field for a ton of plays. Third and goal. Moore to the left of Ganji in a 16-16 game. Here's Moore into the end zone. Touchdown, Nevada. Fourth rushing touchdown of the year for Kelton Moore. And you knew it was only a matter of time. He's able to get his pads down. He fights through Nick Dadashian. And he's able to finish. Twenty carries, ninety-six yards, and a tie-breaking touchdown for Kelton Moore. Sophomore from Arlington, Texas. And the extra point is perfect by Spencer Pettit. With 7.34 remaining in the battle for the Fremont Cannon, 23-16 Nevada. We'll be back to Mackey Stadium in Reno in a moment. Maybe the biggest surprise of the day is how well Nevada's blind defense has played. They came in allowing almost 485 yards a game, 121st in the FBF, but they've had sacks, they've had stuffs, they've had good coverage downfield. There's a sack by Paulus. 
And now their defense has watched their offense come alive to take a 23-16 lead. Brandon Presley hopes to have an opportunity to return this. He will not. Nine yards deep, he makes the catch. Here's Rodgers, and that is what they do well. What's wrong with that? Six plus on the first uh, play of the drive. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, this is an offense for UNLV that averages on the ground 247 plus yards. They've been held to just 131 today. Second and four. And here goes Lexington Thomas. He's going to be a little bit short. Third down and less than a yard. Patrick Chowda. We've called involved this. in another tackle. I mean, he's had an extraordinary day. 95. Last shot was 90. Malik Reed. Chowder. Third down, very short. Thomas. He's got it. I don't know where that linesman's coming in. He's short of the 30 yard line. They had to get to the 30. He's short. He's short again. And with 5.59 to play, I mean, you can punt it and assume you're going to get the football back, but that's not going to be what Coach Sanchez is going to do here. Again, so much on the line for UNLV. Not only the rivalry game, but to get bowl eligible. They'll get it. Rodgers straight ahead. First down, Rebels. There's not a lot there, but he just launches himself in there. Not a lot of space. I mean, this front is playing excited and motivated. It's almost one of those will, will yourself to get it runs by the quarterback. Two receivers near side, one up top. Rodgers wants to throw on first down and a nice catch wow. made and a great delivery of the football. It is Darren Woods who's had a fine day catching the football. He's made every big play they've thrown his way, gain of 15 on the out, but look at the nice delivery outside high where his guy can get it, both feet down. Again, good on Sundays. Flip side of the 50 for the Rebels, trailing 23-16. 4.45 clock moving to go in the fourth quarter. Rodgers, and that is complete for a few to Presley. Let's see him push that a little bit further upfield. You got press coverage and you're in the zone, you're, you're in the gun, and you're running that stop route. You got to go a couple extra yards. You should be catching at about seven yards instead of five. Trips up top. Armani Rogers and Lexington Thomas in the backfield. Rogers into the secondary. To the 29-yard line, first down, UNLV. He puts a lick on Elijah Moody. They but caved he, in the edge, didn't they, Seth? They did a great job. But once he turns the corner, he's, right there. He's physical, isn't he? He really is. Rodgers put together a game-winning drive late against New Mexico last week. To steal a 38-35 victory. He's trying to drive 
the Rebels for a tying score here late. Rogers. Somehow he sneaks free for about five yards. It looked first like he was going to be sacked. Then it looked like it was going to be no gain. He still ends up getting a decent gain on first down. Well, They'll give him four, actually. If he just makes the executive decision right here to go and burst, he's got room. It shows you the kind of power he has. Not so sure if I don't want to hand it off here to give him a break. The run option, Thomas. We'll get a couple. Well defended, and another third down coming for UNLV. Making the tackle was Gabriel Sewell. Also, Jaden Sawyer was around the football. Saxlett has to take himself off the field to put his shoe back on. That's, That's a huge. Criti That's critical huge. third down. Your starting left tackle comes off the field. And your best lineman. To put a shoe on. Not saying you want to burn a T.O., but. And you have Malik Reed, their best pass rusher on that side. Rodgers is blown up short of the first down. It'll be fourth and two. I feel like he's gassed. I mean, there was no burst going in there. Lawson Hall, watch the tackle by number 30. He formed him up. Fourth and two. 136, clock moving to go. That's some shots on your QB. Game on the line, rivalry game on the line. Under center. Over the head, incomplete. Nevada turns away UNLV with 1.14 to play. 23-16, Nevada. Here's the answer to our Century League High Speed Challenge. We asked you what your favorite uh, trophy was in rivalry games. And the results, the bronze boot between Colorado State and Wyoming. Wyoming holding that run right now. Commander in Chief's uh, trophy, obviously that involves uh, Army and Navy as well as the Air Force. Three timeouts for UNLV, so you have to run plays if you're Nevada. And that also takes me to a question set. Why on four, the biggest play of your season, fourth down and two, would you not call timeout? Well, number one, your I, I agree, you should have. Your quarterback was gassed at the time, tired. Moore, over 100 and close to a first down. And if he has it, that will seal the Fremont Cannon, and it is a first down, staying in Reno. And this will be a bitter, bitter loss for UNLV. Not only the rivalry game, but an opportunity to go bowling. Well, it, it also breaks the streak of the visiting team. Been five years in a row that the visitor wow. won in this series. Ball security number one for Moore, and he'll just uh, drop to the ground. Kelton Moore banged away for 107 yards rushing this afternoon. Uh, it, it's, it's been tough. It's been tough, but I think the program is moving in the right direction. They've got to stay the course, and you've got a, a great leader to build your foundation around. And a Mark, Monty Rogers, you, you just got to keep moving. These teams, things take time to develop. You've got to keep moving, and they've got good things in place to do so. Tony Sanchez will walk across the field disappointed. Congratulations to Jay Norvell. It was a tough first year. He called this our bowl game, and 
Nevada will win for the third time this year. And UNLV will drop to five and seven. And for both of these schools, it'll be preparations for uh, spring practice and the rest of uh, their recruiting class to get secured. Brad Thompson with a very happy head coach, Jay Norvell. Brad? Coach, you came back in the second half yeah. and you won the Fremont Cannon. How does it feel? Yes, sir. Just by the grace of God, we're so thankful. Uh, our kids played hard. We made a lot of mistakes, but we stayed together. We stayed the course. We, I'm really proud of how we ran the football in the second half and how our guys played so gritty. What does it say about where this program is heading after a tough season to pick up this one? It's been a frustrating year, but our kids have always hung together, and we're really excited about the future. we got about 13 recruits here, and they can really help us be really good next year. And how about this senior class? How proud are you of them? So proud of our 11 seniors. They've stayed the course. They've done everything we've asked, and uh, just really proud of them. Coach, thanks for your time. Go Thank celebrate. Thank you. Thank you. Guys? All right, Brad, thanks very much. The Fremont Cannon will remain in blue. And, well, for Seth Bonner, for Brad Thompson, field level, and our entire AT&T Sportsnet crew, we thank you again for watching Mountain West football all season long. The final score, the Fremont Canyon will stay in Reno, 23-16 Nevada over UNLV. I'm Drew Goodman saying so long. From Reno, this has been a production of AT&T Sportsnet and the Mountain West. Take care, everybody.